Rahman Rahim. From it we created you. To it we shall return you. And from it we shall once more resurrect you. All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the heavens and the earth. The earth is one, as far as we know. It took two throne days to create so that we may understand God's wisdom, so that we can calculate the age and see God's signs, so that we can ponder over where we came from. Allah wants us to think, to calculate. He wants to show us His wonders. Allah says in chapter 65 verse 12 that God it is who created the seven heavens and their like on earth. Between them the command descends that you may know that God holds power over all things, that God encompasses all things in his knowledge. As always, let us look at other translations of the same Arabic verse that say, It is Allah who has created seven heavens and of the earth the like thereof. It is Allah who has created seven heavens and of the earth the like of them. They're all saying the same thing, that there is some correlation between the seven heavens and the earth. Something is familiar, similar or the same. So therefore, scholars have derived that Allah is saying that there are seven heavens and seven earths. They are the same in number. A few Muslims claim that the number itself isn't important here and that Allah means several, not seven. But seven is seven. When Allah says a number, He means it. And we know there are seven heavens because the Prophet ﷺ gave a detailed description of the night journey, his journey through the seven heavens, where in each heaven he ﷺ met with a Prophet, peace be upon him. So yes, Allah does mean seven universes. We know from a scientific standpoint that Allah works with numbers and the number seven he uses a lot. Seven is a prime number, the optimal prime number. Seven Earth Days, seven layers of the Earth's core, seven continents of Earth, seven seas on Earth. There are seven heavens, with seven doors, seven hells, seven doors to hell, and seven Earths. The seven rounds of Tawaf, seven throws of the stones, seven runs across Safa and Marwa, the seven that will be shaded on the Day of Judgment. The lowest of the fire is so deep that a throw of a stone will take 70 years to reach the bottom. 70,000 angels created each day who do tawaf around Baitul Ma'mur. 70,000 angels holding 70,000 chains for hellfire. 70 angels protecting people daily. Laylatul Qadr may be on the 27th night. It is Allah's signature. He uses the number 7 a lot to suggest it's all His design, one design one designer, one God. And yes, this number seven is also used in the Jewish religion. But why is there controversy over this? It's the same designer. So the number seven isn't only going to come up in the subject of Islam. It's going to come up everywhere and in any era. And not only in God's design, it comes up with man-made creations also, because God created man. Most people's favorite number is seven. Shakespeare described the seven ages of man. Sinbad had seven voyages. James Bond, 007. People say lucky number seven. Even Snow White had seven dwarfs. Seven ancient wonders of the world. Atlantis and its seven islands. The seven Spanish cities of gold. Seven deadly sins. In Hinduism, there are seven higher worlds and seven underworlds. Seven years of sustenance. Seven years of famine. Ladybirds have seven spots, seven rows of the periodic table. Inside an atom there are seven levels of energy inside the electron. The cervical spine has seven stacked bones. Memory works in sevens. We can remember seven items. Our skin is generated in seven days. Some say 27 days. Our cells are renewed every seven years. The neutral pH value is seven between acidity and alkalinity. There are seven colours of the rainbow, the seven summits of the highest peaks, and of course there are the seven cosmic throne days. And what day is Judgment Day on? Day seven. So it suffices to say, when Allah says seven heavens, 
He means seven heavens. This Quranic verse may be referring to the similarity of the seven heavens and the earth in four different ways. Let's have a look at the four possibilities and explore this verse. 1. The verse is referring to seven earths, including our own earth, six other earths like our earth, in the other six universes above us, or they are within our own universe. The universes are vast. It is not a stretch to think that there are other Earths out there with life. Even within our own tiny universe, there are zillions of galaxies, and the rest of the universes are much, much incomparably bigger than our own. NASA discovered seven Earth-like planets within our own universe. Coincidentally, seven? Or did Allah know we would question this? Of course, Allah knew. For there to be Earth-like planets in the other heavens, there needs to be a solar system to sustain life. Allah does say that he has adorned the first heaven with lanterns. However, that does not mean that there is not a star or stars in any other universe. Or where is Isa a.s.? Where are the other prophets, peace be upon them? Why is paradise bright? Where is Allah's throne? In the darkness? No. We are told that paradise is in daylight. When Allah says he has adorned the first heaven with lanterns, he is describing the first heaven because we can see it. We can see his lanterns and there are zillions of stars. It does not necessarily mean that the other universes are dark. However, it also does not mean that the other Earth-like planets are not in our own universe, the first heaven. There are zillions of galaxies right here in the first heaven. The other six Earths may just be in our own neighborhood with their own solar systems. Two, the verse is referring to the seven layers of the Earth's core. There is definite proof that the Earth has seven layers. We have the inner and outer core. Then above those layers, we have the mantle, which consists of four layers. And then finally, we have the Earth's crust. Three, the verse is referring to the seven continents of Earth. There are seven continents on Earth. Africa, Antarctica, Asia, Australia, Europe, North America, and South America. Four, the verse is referring to the seven hells all the seven earths as several of the prophets peace be upon them have quoted including prophet muhammad وسلم, a prophet وسلم, said that whoever takes a piece of land unjustly he will sink down the seven earths on the day of judgment yes he could be talking about the earth's core but note that in chapter 15 verse 44 of the quran allah mentions that hell has seven gates indicating that hell has seven levels. Therefore, the seven Earths mentioned here is most likely seven hells below our universe. The Prophet ﷺ also said that there are seven Earths below ours, with 500 years between them. On a separate occasion, Allah said to Moses, peace be upon him, that if the seven heavens with all its inhabitants and the seven earths with all its inhabitants were put on one side of the scale and la ilaha illallah was put on the other, la ilaha illallah would outweigh them. It seems clear that Allah is talking about the seven hells here because the seven heavens would already contain the seven earth-like planets. Or Allah would have said, with the seven earths, not and the seven earths. Also note that all the inhabitants would also be the same in number if Allah was talking about earth-like planets to Moses peace be upon him. Allah would not have to say that twice, all of its inhabitants. Earth doesn't just mean the planet earth, it also means land, surface or soil. So these are the four explanations for this Quranic verse. Or is there another, a fifth? explanation. God it is who created seven heavens and their like on earth. We spoke about the similarity of the heavens and the earth in number, but what about in shape? The universe has a shape. All the seven universes have a shape, and they are flat. We are not talking about the earth. The earth is round. The scientists say that the universe is flat. The fabric of space is flat. God it is who created seven heavens and their like on earth. Is it a coincidence that there are seven continents on earth? Or is it part of a grand design? Earth's continents used to be one landmass, Pangaea. Then Pangaea separated into seven. Doesn't this sound familiar? The Big Bang. God joined the heavens and the earth together and then he clove them asunder into seven heavens, seven universes. 
We have a small demonstration, a small mirror effect of the Big Bang here on our own planet. It was one. Then the seven heavens separated, like they did 13.82 billion years ago. So just maybe, Allah created the seven continents of Earth in the shape of the seven heavens? Okay, so you may think this is unbelievable and some may be thinking that the seven continents aren't actually clear-cut separate. They are actually, in terms of landmass, six continents if we were really technical, as Asia and Europe are part of the same landmass. Some countries even say there are five continents. In the old world, it was only four continents, but the majority do say seven continents. Okay, fine, it's not clear-cut unanimous. So maybe it's a bit of a stretch. Did you know that Pangaea wasn't the only supercontinent to form ever since the creation of the Earth 4.6 billion years ago? There were more than just the one. How many? Seven. All clear cut. Each with one landmass. Valbara. Ur. Kenorland. Columbia. Rodinia. Panosia and Pangaea. So it begs a question, what if the shapes of the seven heavens, the seven universes including our own, are all in the shapes of the seven supercontinents of the Earth? Unbelievable, isn't it? Subhanallah. And one day, just as Pangaea separated 200 million years ago, Scientists predict that in about 200 to 250 million years from now, the seven continents will come together to form a supercontinent once again. But we know we are at the end times. The final prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, has come and gone, and the seventh day is near. So which of the five explanations of the verse is it? All of the above. We've seen Allah do this when he gives multiple examples through one verse. For example, the six days come to mind when Allah means days and periods at the same time, Yawm. As usual, Allah Almighty, in all His glory and wisdom, and the amazing way He uses words in His glorious book, is saying multiple things through only one single verse. There are seven earth-like planets, there are seven layers of the earth's core, there are seven hells, there are seven continents, and finally, and most astonishingly, there were seven supercontinents that resemble the shapes that Allah gave to the seven universes, the seven heavens. Which universe is in which shape? Only Allah knows. For all we know, the heaven that we are in right now, our universe, just may be in the shape of Pangaea. Pangaea.